Hey everybody, it is Jason from the Texas Gun Vault 2 and I'm back here in my garage. I just got home from the range. I have had a crazy busy week at work and so I'm a little bit behind on making videos but hopefully my schedule will open up a little bit more and I just wanted to talk about my range experience today and how it went and some other people that were there and things that are annoying and stupid. Let's talk about the guns that I took to the range today. Well, really one was a product review, not of the gun, but of the site. You guys know I've been dealing with trying to figure out these optics mounting plates for these red dots I have in for review. And one of the guns I took today was the Walther PDP. This is the full size, the five inch barrel. And I took the red dot here that is from the ADE, let's see if I can find the box, ADE Advanced Optics Tactical Reflex Dot Sight is what it says. And this is a cheaper sight. I took it to the range. And I started off by simply co-witnessing the iron sights with the dot. You know, I feel like that's a good place to start, and then I'll adjust the dot as I go. And I mentioned maybe one of my last videos that one of the problems and issues I had with this site is not the installation but the adjustments for the windage and the elevation that the adjustments don't have clicks it's just a smooth uh, turning of a screw and that concerned me because I was thinking that it would not hold zero I had somebody say they had like a Sig Romeo that had the same issue, but theirs holds zero just fine. Well, I got it to the range and started shooting it, the first magazine, and I would say about 10 rounds in, I started to notice that the sight, or sorry, the point of impact was getting lower and lower and lower. And then when I adjust, or adjusted my eye to see where the dot was co witness it was no longer co-witnessing with the iron sights. It was essentially the dot itself was rising in, in elevation and moving a little bit to the left. Okay, so I stopped that and I reloaded the magazine. And I was like, okay, so I'm gonna try a different target. I was not going to adjust it because I was essentially going to see where the you know the uh, original grouping was, then adjust it and try it again. And I was like, okay, this thing is already moving. And I put another magazine through it and it got worse and worse and worse. And eventually the dot was so far away from originally it was when it was coat witnessed. This thing is an absolute piece of junk. I mean, the dot itself doesn't have any flickering. Uh, it seems to be well built, but the fact that they don't have any click adjustments is the detriment to the site. So I only put maybe a magazine and a half to this. It was like, that is it. And uh, worst red dot site. I've ever shot on a pistol. And even the cheap Chinese ones that I've shown you guys before, often they work okay. This one doesn't even, even hold zero. I think the only thing that's good about this is the little tiny screwdriver that comes with it. So I'm gonna save this, but this red dot sight, absolute piece of junk. It's going to get zero out of five stars. So spoiler alert on that one. The other gun I took to the range today uh, let me get it. There's one that I talked about. It's the Smith & Wesson folding 9mm carbine. And this, I have to say, was a fun, fun gun to shoot. My wife loved it, and I was very impressed by it. Extremely accurate. I do have some issues with it, and I'm, I think I'll save most of those for the range report. But the issues that I have with it are mainly ergonomics and, I guess, controls. But the gun shoots fantastic. About the same recoil as a 9mm AR-15, so it's a little bit heavier than what you would think a 9mm should be, but that's because it's direct blowback and the bolt is really heavy, and that comes back into your shoulder. It's not as soft shooting, let's say, as a Smith & Wesson, um, sorry, Smith & Wesson, a H&K MP5, sorry. Smith & Wesson, this is the FPC in the HK MP5. A lot of cool design choices on it, like these magazines that can go here into the stock. 
but they're a little bit weird to get out. That's going back into the controls that I'm talking about. But trigger feels like an M&P. I was really impressed with the performance. The ergonomics, I think, need to be rethought. Um, I think that kel has a better idea where the barrel on the Sub-2000 folds up versus this one folding to the side. And the main issue with it folding to the side, that's a little bit thick. And it goes in the case a little bit weird. It does work. However, I do think that if it folded up, it would be a thinner package. And I think that would be a little bit easier to carry as well. The balance of the gun is also a little bit weird because there's so much weight in the back. But my wife liked it. I liked it. And this thing is honestly a lot of fun to shoot and very accurate. So not going to be a perfect review. But this thing definitely has a lot going for it if you're looking for a 9mm carbine. And a lot of fun. Smith & Wesson did a really good job on that. I was going to take to the range. I don't know if I have it out here. I may have put it, put it back in. The, um, the primary weapon systems 762 upper for a AR-15. I put it on one of my SBR lowers. And I just didn't get around to it because there was a lot of people at the range today and a lot of knuckleheads at the range today. Uh, and by knuckleheads, well, let me ask you this, this question. If you're at the range and everybody has hearing protection on and there's a bunch of people there that you don't know, do you play music at the range, especially an indoor range? I think the answer for most of you will be no, especially if it's like club music or rap music. Well, that's what these people did. Hopefully, it's not, it's not going to come through on the video. If it does, I'm going to have to talk about it in the range report and go, you got to put up with the music in the background. So silly. So, I don't know. It, and it was, it, I don't know. It, it, that, that's what it was. I wasn't going to go over there and ask them to stop. It was just, hey, you want to be a knucklehead, you'd be a knucklehead. Another thing that, that was there, it had nothing to do with safety or anything, is there were some people there at the range that should not be wearing tactical clothing, if you guys know what I mean. Like, for example, I do not pretend that I am some type of tactical operator or competition shooter or something I'm not. When I go to the range, I'm pretty much wearing what, what you see right here. I'm nobody special. I don't claim to be anything I'm not, okay? So I'm not going to dress apart. I'm not there to, for the theatrics. But there was somebody there that was, I don't think they're a novice, but they were shooting, they, they were doing the whole teacup thing like this. Um, I don't know. It was kind of weird. They kind of seemed us, but they had all this like tactical gear on like tactical pants that were way too big for them i mean not just a little bit big but way too big and they were had a tight belt on they had like so it's like what are you doing like i don't know or do you feel like you're some type of operator anyway i guess i shouldn't judge because i'm no sense of fashion but i know that i am not going to be wearing tactical pants that's just not something that i'm going to do because i'm not a tactical operator nor do i claim to be uh, if you want to that's fine but, man, if, if you're going to do it, at least know what, you, what you're doing. Like the guys that are the competition shooters, they go to the range that sometimes I always say annoy me, but they're nice and they're safe. They wear their jerseys and things, but that's understandable, even though I think it's kind of, kind of dorky and that's okay. But they are competition shooters and they do compete in IDPA. So it's completely logical for them to go to the range, going through their drills, wearing what they're going to wear at their competitions in their get up. You know, they got their holsters, they got their belts, they got their jerseys. Okay, a little bit dorky for, you know, a Friday night uh, hanging out out here at the range, whatever. But they are what they uh, try to act like they are. You know, they are competition shooters and they do a good job and they're nice guys. Don't come to the range dressed up like a tactical operator if you're not a tactical operator. The only other issue I had was somebody um, essentially left the bay they were at. Now, I'm always watching for safety reasons, what's going on, especially people I do not know. And, you know, there's protocols at a range. And the range that I shoot at, the Frisco Gun Club and the, the VIP lanes, it's 
I would say semi-private during the day. It's completely private at night because I have 24-hour biometric access to it. So anybody that can get in can get in. So there's no range safety officer there. And so I'm always paying attention, especially to people that I don't know or people that I think might be novices just for safety reasons. And there was one guy, I guess it was he was kind of part of his friend group of that wannabe tactical operator. He was shooting something. I don't know what it was, a clock or whatever. And he left the bay. And I guess he wanted to see what his friend was shooting. So instead of taking the gun he was shooting and putting it down on the table and then walking to the other bay, he did have his finger off the gun or off the trigger. He had the gun pointed down. He did not sweep any in anybody. He did have good muzzle discipline, but he took the gun and he went to the other bay and was talking to them and things and then walked back to his bay and then began shooting again. If you're going to change bays or you're not shooting, put the freaking gun down, okay? I Just put the gun down. When I'm at the range and I have everything set up on the shooting table, unless I am bagging it up, putting it back in one of the bags, it stays on the table, muzzle pointed down range. There's no need for me to pick up the gun to wa just walk around. Now, if I need to change bays for whatever reason, maybe I'm shooting a rifle or a pistol, you know, it's going to be a quick thing where it's, okay, so action is, is open, magazine is out of the gun, and I'm quickly, I pick up the gun, gun pointed down, action once again, open, move bay, put the gun back down. That is what you're supposed to do. Drove me nuts. And finally, there were so many uh, people there once again. I had to look to my wife and just go, we're, get, we're, we're out of here. I got all the footage I need for this and for that red dot. I didn't get to that other, that upper receiver. So just more crazy times uh, at the range. Yeah, it drives me absolutely uh, bonkers. One more thing I want to say before I let you guys go for the evening is this is more just gun social media talk here. I cannot figure out Rumble, why it is no longer syncing. On the Texas Gun Vault 2, it is not syncing. I don't know why. I've unlinked the Texas Gun Vault, and I'm just manually uploading the videos from the other channel. But I cannot figure out why it's not syncing now at all. And I've looked online. Some people are having issues. Some people are not. It's both of my channels. Um, so... The Texas Gun Vault 2 on Rumble is probably going to go on a hiatus for a little bit because I can't upload these videos to the Texas Gun Vault 2 on Rumble from my phone. It doesn't. There's no feature for that, so I I, I can't upload both together. I anyway, and then it doesn't sync. So I used to just upload this to YouTube, and then the Rumble would uh, or Rumble would then transfer the sync over from YouTube to their platform. And it made life so easy, right? It would take the thumbnail, it would take the um, description, it would take everything and just migrate it over. And it no longer does that. And I cannot figure out why. It just stops. It says it's synced. It recognizes it on the YouTube, on the Rumble side. It says, is this the channel you want to sync? It has the right icon, has the right, all the data, all that stuff is right. You push sync and then it doesn't sync. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out. So uh, Rumble right now is just going to have to, especially the Texas Gun Vault 2 and Rumble is just going to have to be a side project. Uh, I'll continue to upload individually to the main Texas Gun Vault on Rumble. That's not going to be a problem. I can do that from my computer. But uh, anyway, if you guys are rumble experts and can tell me what's going on or know of anything let me know rumble needs to get this figured out so anyway there you go a little gun talk today uh about some guns that i really enjoyed shooting uh this one here and then of course the piece of junk walther pdp so there you go so let me know what you think in the comment section below and thank you for joining me here in the garage for a little gun talk. I always enjoy it to get your thoughts, opinions, and experiences on all there is to talk about in the gun world. So, as always, thanks for watching.